Hi, and welcome to this I2K 2022 presentation in which I'll introduce the Image Data Explorer, a piece of software we developed for interactive exploration of image derived data. At Emble, we're dealing with a range of image based projects. I'm listing here three examples of projects I've been involved in, going from image based screens to characterization of cells in primary cultures, and more recently, an imaging flow cytometry project. From a data analysis perspective, what these projects have in common is a workflow which starts with segmentation to identify objects of interest, typically cells or nuclei, followed by feature extraction and use of the features to classify the objects. In this workflow, exploratory analysis is often overlooked, although it is generally needed very early, in particular at pilot stages. Two tasks are almost always required. The first is interactive visualization in which one can select a data point and view corresponding images. And the second is annotation, the ability to associate labels to data points, typically to build a training set for the classification task, but also for quality control purposes. Standard exploratory data analysis tools like clustering and dimensionality reduction are essentially helpers for these tasks. So we want a piece of software that shows the image from which a data point is derived, with which data can be annotated, and which provides some helper data analysis functions. These features are already available in various pieces of software, most prominently Cell Profiler Analyst or combinations of Fiji plugins. So why did we develop the Image Data Explorer? Well, we needed something that could be used for a quick look at the data so that was easy to deploy and access independently from upstream and downstream software, and in the context of facilities that could be offered as a service with remote access. Our solution was guided by the remote service requirement and takes the form of a web application. It started life as an R script used for one project, but as features were added, it was refactored using shiny modules which makes it easy to customize by adding or removing features. The code is available on Emble's GitLab server and the application can also be publicly accessed in the cloud at shiny-portal.embl.de. In the Image Data Explorer, most of the action happens in the Explore workspace, which consists of three panels, a plot area on the left, an image viewer on the right, and a data table at the bottom. These panels are linked so that selecting an item in one will highlight it in the other two. For example, clicking on the image viewer will select the closest cell and highlight both the corresponding row in the table and the corresponding data point in the scatter plot. We try to keep requirements for input data light. So the Image Data Explorer needs only one data table in the form of a character separated text file. To link data points to images, one column must give the location of an image corresponding to each row and region of interest should be represented by columns giving coordinates of an anchor point, like the center of the object. The images themselves are only required to be under one common root directory and otherwise can be arbitrarily organized when the image location in the table is expressed as a path relative to this route. To better support the remote case, images can also be in an S3 compatible object store. In the remaining time, I'd like to illustrate how the Image Data Explorer can be used in an exploratory project. Here, we're interested in looking for possible nuclear phenotypes in publicly available images from the image data resource. To process the images and extract nuclear and nuclear features, we built a cell profiler pipeline that we run using Galaxy. I won't go into details here, but the pipeline is available from the workflow hub, and the input can be a list of image IDs from the IDR, or actually from any Omero database so that the images are directly staged on the Galaxy server. At the pilot, we selected images from an sRNA screen for chromosome condensation phenotypes. 
The idea is that both chromosome condensation and nucleoli are thought to depend on phase separation mechanisms, and so might have some regulators in common. We started with 100 images for sRNAs with chromosome condensation phenotypes and their corresponding controls, and extracted about 100 features for some 9,000 nuclei. We start by having a look at nuclear size versus nucleoline number and do a bit of quality control by looking at outliers. For example, we suspect that large nuclei could be artifacts, as the example selected here. We can use a second image viewer to simultaneously look at segmentation mask and confirm that large nuclei are indeed artifacts, some of them resulting from problems in chromosome segregation and others from segmentation errors. So we may want to add some quality control annotations to the data table so that artifacts can be excluded from analysis later on. Here is a short screen cache showing how to select and annotate large nuclei as failed QC by selecting data points directly from the plot. Note that selection is not limited to rectangular areas. After this, clicking the annotate selection button brings up a list of labels that we have previously defined. Clicking on one adds it to the corresponding rows of the data table in the, in the column that was also previously designated as annotation column. Next, we can look at the distribution of nucleoline numbers per nucleus for each sRNA. Of interest here are the sRNAs against NPM1, which is a known nuclear protein whose knockdown affects nuclear structure. Here we can see an increase in the fraction of nuclei with no nucleolus with the sRNAs against NPM1, but also with a few others. Given that the distributions overlap with control, we would like to know if there are features that would be better at revealing nuclear phenotypes. For this, we turn to feature selection. First, we assume that NPM1 nuclei that have few nucleoli are representative of a phenotype and annotate them as positive, and then annotate some negative control nuclei as negative. With this annotation, we can then train an XGBoost classifier and use its ability to rank features to select the most relevant ones. We ensure that the classifier is doing a good enough job by looking at the various information and statistics reported for the model. Here, the top feature is nucleus size, and we can verify this by looking at the distribution of nucleus size by sRNA, and we can indeed see the difference between negative control and NPM1, but also uh, sRNAs against other genes. Those seem to follow the same pattern of increased fraction of nuclei without nucleus and nuclei with small nuclei. Summary, I've shown how the image data explorer can be used to visualize cells associated with data points in a scatter plot, how to look at features distribution by category, how to annotate cells, and finally how to use these new annotations to identify features for use in downstream analysis. The image data explorer offers more functionalities than I've shown here, but have proved useful in other projects. I also want to remind you that the code can be found in the projects repository and that the app is also accessible in the cloud. And to end, I would like to thank my collaborators at Emble, in particular Corali, who refactored expanding an early prototype of the image data explorer. And thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take questions now if time permits, but you can also ask questions anytime on forum.image.sc.